Sorry about that, babe. All right, guys, we're back with another No Death walkthrough guide. This time it's going to be TMNT 2, the arcade game on the NES. I did a No Death run with each of the four turtles, but we're going to showcase this one here with Donatello as it was my cleanest. So first level here, pretty standard stuff. So while this is going on, I'm going to give you some general tips for the run. First, you're pretty much only going to want to do the jump kick and jump attack, which is the one where you press A and then B shortly thereafter. Uh, regular attacks in this game don't really do much. Um, the two ta attacks that I just mentioned uh, do the most damage and they give you like the most leeway and iframes uh, for the enemies. So, Also, one thing to note, uh, these were no death runs, but they weren't necessarily perfect. Um, I did uh, unveil a bunch of shorts with more boss strategies, um, and I will also have a segmented no-hit all bosses run. Not a run, but like all the bosses, back to back to back, segmented, no-hit, um, which should give you some other strategies as well. So if there's any kind of boss fight in this run that's not really satisfactory, um, I will cover a better strat either in another video um, or something or other. So take it with a grain of salt. But yeah, first level here, it's actually not super easy. Um, there is no pizza in this level, so there's no way to replenish your health. Uh, and for like newcomers, you probably will die a couple times here, I would assume. But uh, no real uh, crazy enemy variety. It's just foot soldiers in their different variations. Um, you know, these guys, throw projectiles. Uh, the purple ones are primarily the karate kicking ones where they basically jump kick their way onto the screen, which as time went on, I learned to kind of uh, fall back and avoid. You kind of want to let them do their thing first uh, and then go in for the attack. Uh, another strat, as you may see me do here and there, is I will try to jump kick to get behind people. Uh, it's just an easy way to kind of get out of harm's way and then set up the patented a, B, jump attack, and I do want to mention that oftentimes if you see me doing a regular attack, it's because I messed up the button press. The A, B, jump attack that you're seeing here against the Katana Warriors um, is the best attack in the game, but it's got a little bit of a tricky nuance to it, uh, and if you're not on the ball with it, you could easily basically drop an input and do a regular attack, and uh, at times during the runs, whether it's this one or one of my other Turtles runs that you will see on the channel. Um, kind of puts me in harm's way, because I wasn't expecting a regular attack to come out. But we are at the end of the first part, which is the biggest part, to be fair, of the first stage here. Uh, easiest way to deal with these guys is to get them over to the edge of the screen where it's possible, because then you can just wail on them. Um, but we are almost at the boss. We have to deal with a couple foot soldier waves here. Pretty cool room, by the way. This is one of the more detailed rooms in the entire game, but... Got the machine gun guys here. This is their introduction. Again, the AB jump attack is the best way to deal with them. And now we got Rocksteady coming up. Um, there is a way to get Rocksteady in a damage loop. You saw that I was almost doing it there, but I didn't do it perfectly. And as such, I got knocked out. Bebop and Rocksteady are very similar. They both have guns. They both have anti-air attacks. And they both charge. When they charge, you're going to want to get the hell out of the way. Um, the best way to deal with Rocksteady here is to aim lower with your jump kicks. Uh, if you aim lower, like towards the knee or shin area, uh, you will avoid his machine gun fire uh, up into the sky, which is another anti-air of his. And that's pretty much it. Uh, if you can't get the stun lock early on, then all you're going to want to do is jump kick him until he's done. Better takes April, and you're on to the next stage. All right, so this is um, another fairly long stage, uh, not too difficult again, and you do get a pizza uh, about midway through, which is nice. Um, again, especially for newcomers, uh, although for me, you know, at this point with my skills, uh, the pizza placement was a little too early. Didn't really need it, <laughs> but it is what it is. Beggars can't be choosers, right? 
So again, foot soldiers, guys. Uh, AB attack. Um, and if you kind of can't do that, then do your jump kicks for either attacking or spacing. Unless it's the uh, the karate kicking purple ones, pretty much every other foot soldier, it's best to kind of rush them. The blue guys, the katana guys, the boomerang throwing guys, which you haven't seen yet, um, even the machine gun guys, uh, getting to them as quickly as possible. These ones right here, though, I do find it's best to play a little bit more passively, uh, and they usually come in crazy waves, especially later on in the game. You get a little bit of a fake out here. I think there's three types of purple foot soldiers. Um, there's the, the karate kicking ones, there's these guys that throw the dynamite, and then there's uh, foot soldiers that more of a standard um, affair. I believe they have like shurikens. Could be wrong, don't remember, but uh, those guys are definitely easier. The karate kicking guys that come from off the screen are actually pretty annoying. And there's the aforementioned pizza, a little bit too early. So, as is the case with most of the times when you see the pizzas on the screen, um, unless it's right by the boss, you're going to want to eliminate all the enemies first. That way you're not wasting the pizza in case you get hit. Uh, if you hit that girl down below, you actually get another point. Uh, we're not focused on points because, obviously, we're trying to beat the game without dying. But every 200 points, I believe, uh, you get a, a rest or a life up, and it maxes out at 5. So, if you're playing the game like that, of course, you might want to drop down and hit that bodacious babe for an extra point. So we're working our way down here. Uh, there you saw the, the yellow guys with the boomerang guys. You're going to want to avoid these Pizza Hut signs, so I stay low there. Uh, these are also boomerang throwers. We're actually, like, almost at the boss already. Continuing on here, dealing with more karate kicking foot soldiers. Um, yeah, realistically, I would say the hardest levels in the game, you could probably assume, right, would be uh, five, six, and seven. Um, the biggest difficulty spike for sure is the dojo level, which is an NES exclusive. Obviously, Technodrome is not easy either, but anyway, here we are with um, Bebop. There is a way to stun lock him if you kind of position yourself to where I am right now with the wheel well in that middle line and do the, um, the A B jump attack. You could stun lock him easily. You could actually also stun lock him with a regular attack, but you saw I wasn't able to do that, which is good because if you screw it up, you got to know what to do anyway, right? So, very similar strat uh, like we had with Rocksteady, except. Um, I find it to be a little bit better to attack behind his head with my jump kicks. Now, he has more health and he's definitely more annoying. Uh, he's a little bit more trigger happy with his uppercut, which is an anti-air, uh, as well as the charging. Same story, guys, you're gonna want to avoid the charging when it's, you know, where possible. There you saw a bunch of anti-airs by him. Definitely, obviously, the fight gets a lot easier <laughs> if you stun lock him, but uh, don't fear. If you basically do what I just did, you should be okay. And maybe you'll get a little bit better RNG where he's not uppercutting constantly. Now we're down to the sewers, which I would probably say actually is even easier than the last level. Uh, the boss is definitely easier than both Bebop and Rocksteady, in my opinion. And it's also a place where you could farm for points if you'd like. And here we see another new foot soldier, Sledgehammer. Not too much to worry about there. They have a very slow telegraphed attack, as is the case with every other foot soldier. If you do a jumping AB attack, um, they die in one hit. But we're just trying to get those off and maintain our spacing. So now we got Mausers coming out of the wall, which is going to happen a few more times in this level. I like to stand basically right by the hole, and as soon as they start emerging, I do the jumping AB attack, which also kills them in one hit. We're getting a, a Mauser party over here. And there you saw, I, I screwed it up, which is actually the first time I think I ever screwed it up. <laughs> Maybe once or twice before that, but um, they don't hurt that much, so it's really not that big of a deal.
more sledgehammer foot soldiers. Or mallets, whatever the hell they are. Got some more katana guys. So you might see like a little bit of a strat developing there. Uh, the enemies that come from below, and that's uh, also the case with a few levels coming up. Let them jump to you. That way you could just basically A, B, jumping attack them out of the air and you never actually have to deal with them. So it's a pretty good uh, strat to keep in mind. And I am having a horrible time here with the Mausers. It's funny, the, overall this is my cleanest run, so that's why we're, you know, doing the voiceover for it, but... Man, that was some uh, amateur, uh, <laughs> amateur stuff right there. But again, don't fear, they're really super easy, so... To avoid that grate or poles, whatever the hell those are, uh, jump down into the water. Uh, but be careful because as you saw there was a missile coming at you. So when you jump down you pretty much want to get back up onto the uh, walking surface as quickly as possible. Again, dealing with more foot soldiers. You know, like I said, there is variation in them, but eventually you see enough of them and they all have unique colors, so you kind of get the picture. You know, those guys are going to do their floaty jump attacks. Did a little bit better there with the <laughs> with the Mausers, so feel feel good about myself. Uh, the positioning of these guys made me not want to do the jumping AB attacks. That's why you saw a little bit more jumping kicks there. As I said, the jump kick is also a very viable attack, but it takes a little bit longer than the AB. Speaking of which, we'll be doing both of those attacks here to the human form of Baxter. As you may see, he is dropping Mausers, um, and basically, if you want. You could farm them here. Um, again, I'm trying not to die, so I don't really care. But yeah, uh, Baxter doesn't really attack you, I don't think. The only things that do attack you are the Mausers, so if you kind of stay on the ground level and you keep hitting them, uh, they'll keep coming out. But uh, the quickest way to deal with him is jumping AB attack and jump kicks. Just kind of following him around the screen. Very, very easy boss, but I do appreciate the gimmick uh, that comes with him because he's actually not in the actual arcade version from what I remember At least as a boss Actually, I take that back that form might be Anyway, this level is not I'm definitely not an expert on the arcade version guys, but uh, The one level where you fight Baxter as a fly like his mutant form um, that is a Another Bebop and Rocksteady fight in the actual arcade version. So yeah. This level's pretty tough too, actually. Um, you saw the level started with uh, those falling snow... like, balls. What you want to do is stay towards the top of the screen, and that's actually a, uh, a tip that you're going to want to employ oftentimes, because as you saw there, uh, if we were at the middle we would have been run over. We have uh, Frosty the Hitman, I believe they're called. <laughs> Um, similar to those enemies from the end of stage one, you're going to want to get them over to the side of the screen where you could wail on them and essentially stun lock them. Uh, these guys do shoot really annoying missiles, which can be hit, but it, it's a little tricky. Um, so you want to take care of them as quickly as possible, and hopefully you could wedge them against the wall, make uh, quick work of them. You'll also deal with them again later in the level, so gotta get used to them. Here, these uh, foot soldiers throw snowballs at you. Not exaggerating. Um, pretty easy to deal with. Definitely on the lower end of uh, foot soldier difficulty. Again, wanting to stay towards the top of the screen as I find it gives you, you know, the most leeway. Uh, I find, obviously, you know, with those uh, snow mounds that you could fall into, or they explode. I don't remember, because I actually never touched one, but either way, you do get hurt when you go into them or onto them. Um, you know, obviously, they're towards the bottom of the screens, you want to stay towards the top, as well as not wanting to get run over yet again, as you see here. Which is funny, I forget my own advice, I definitely get run over once or twice in some of my other Turtle No Death runs that I did, which I will be putting in a compilation video for all four. Again, the Snowball Foot Soldier is pretty easy. More Frosty the Hitman. Thankfully this time, I feel like the spawn was a little bit more uh, forgiving. <clears throat> I mean, 
you can get damaged by them, but realistically, it's it's pretty much the missiles what's going to be uh, doing all the damage and the annoyance here. And that's that's great. They both ended up over exactly where I was. We're doing okay health-wise. We are approaching the end of the level. When uh, you have the second snow boulder falling segment, you want to stay towards the bottom of the screen. Try to get to the bottom right as quickly as possible. It's still kind of RNG based though, so as you saw, I did get hit quite a bit. Um, if I did a better job of getting to the bottom right, I probably would have only got hit once, but... Yes, the first wave, uh, you want to get to the top. The second wave of those, you want to get to the bottom. But yeah, we are right by the boss, and luckily the boss is really easy. Yeah, I, you know what? I forgot about this. I almost died at this level. I did not have a perfect run uh, in any of my runs, but I remember this now. This was a pretty poor showing. Luckily, like I said, for Tora here, I have a really good strat. It's all about the jump kicks. Uh, he will run to one side of the screen and throw the snow boulders. So you can kind of get him in a loop here, as you see. As long as you're really on point with your left to right jump kicks, you could do it all the way until he dies, really. But if he ends up going to the one side of the screen, you're going to want to go to the other side as quickly as possible, and if need be, you could jump kick to get some more distance, and eventually jump over, trying to get him in this loop. I uh, am able to routinely do this fight, either taking no damage or maybe getting hit once. It's really not that bad when you know what you're doing. The, uh, the quick left to right jump kick attack, though, can be a little bit tricky. It looks easier than it is, and sometimes when you see me kind of pop out of it, it's because it's not perfect and not super easy. Like, one little variation in your uh, timing and, and or finger placement on the buttons, and that kind of throws it all off, but there you go. Pretty easy uh, no-hit strat that you can employ. Without too much, you know, thinking and resistance. That was a little close for comfort, guys. That was not the best level. Moving on here. These uh, traffic cones can be hit into the foot soldiers. I think they instantly kill them if you hit them, but eh, I don't really use... Uh, many of these, like, there's exploding barrels, I believe, in this level. Yep, right here. Um, I mean, it's okay to hit them, but they also hurt you, so, and I don't know. I find oftentimes it's better off, you know, just, you should just focus on killing the enemy. Uh, especially when, you know, the jumping attack kills them in one hit anyway, like, who cares? Here we have another variation of the foot soldier, they're not, uh doing the karate kick. They're also not throwing the dynamite. As I mentioned, they're kind of more standard. They may or may not have uh, throwing weapons, but for the most part, they kind of just lumber towards you and punch. There's also going to be, uh, you see like that orange car there? There's going to be two instances of this level where uh, one of the cars will drive down at you, and I think they unveil machine gun foot soldiers, the red ones. So you're going to want to be wary of that, but it's not yet. Another exploding barrel. Go ahead if you want. Doesn't really matter to me though. The barrel did nothing. <laughs> As always guys, with the jumping uh, karate kicking foot soldiers, you're going to want to get your spacing about you, let them do their thing, and then go in for the attack. Here is the first instance of Exactly what I mentioned earlier about the car and the machine gunners. I kind of bait it out. There's going to be one more as well. Where uh, the car appears after one of those like cargo cars that you see on the left right now. Anytime you see a purple foot soldier and they're not jump kicking, it's a welcome sight. That's what I will say. And there's the last car charging at you. If you feel like you're not getting like good, I don't know, distance and spacing with the uh, machine gunners, definitely uh, jump kick behind them. They are one of the tougher ones to just kind of walk up to and hit if you feel like you didn't get it quick enough, so to speak. Uh, so don't, don't be a hero. 
because they could definitely damage you really quickly otherwise. There was another run um, before the boss, before Krang, which is General Trag. Um, there's a pizza in the Technodrum and machine gunners, and I almost got killed. The uh, machine gunners are definitely no joke if you don't uh, kind of get the patterns going. And there you see the throwing version of the purple foot soldier. <clears throat> uh, this is also, much like uh, the first Baxter, a very easy boss. This is the easiest way to kill him. If you get him over to the left side of the screen and stay in the middle of his uh, projectiles, you can do the jumping AB attack and loop him. Pretty much what you do is you wait for the projectile to go through, you jump up attack, rinse and repeat, and he won't even move. Uh, if you kind of screw something up, then he will start bouncing around. In general, I find it is best to stay in the upper left hand corner. If you need a pizza, obviously there's the one on the right. Um, I have a no death hit short. Oh no, excuse me, I didn't make a short of it, but I do have a no death, obviously, attempt of him doing the uh, other up, upper left hand corner strat, so you can check that out if you'd like. But the one that you just saw there was probably the easiest. And now we're moving on to actually kind of a, a bit of an odd section of the game. Uh, there's no boss uh, until um, you get past the freeway level. Or scene, whatever it's called. Yeah, going back to the Baxter mutation I mentioned a little earlier that I'm pretty sure in the arcade version you do not fight him there. You fight another Bebop and Rocksteady, which does not exist in this game. That was a mistake. Rookie mistake. What did I say earlier, guys? You're better off staying towards the top of the screen more often than not. Because um, you're more easily able to avoid things. Uh, so definitely that is the case with this level as well. There's also going to be another car coming by later, so be wary of that. And these guys, same old story. You want to get them over to the edge of the screen. Otherwise, they have very telegraphed attacks, so they're not very difficult anyway. Sometimes they could be a bit of a pain to hit in the first place, but uh, nothing really to worry about. Got more dynamite throwers here. Take your time. Definitely don't want to get blown up by that dynamite. They also, you probably saw that there, they have a bit of a tricky hitbox, and I think the same goes for the machine gunner. Uh, so just be careful. With these spear guys too, I didn't really mention that yet. What you're going to want to do is kind of approach them from top to bottom or bottom to top. It is not a good idea to fight them straight on or approach them straight on, uh, because the spears can be really annoying. Whereas if you approach them from top to bottom or bottom to top, oftentimes you can hit them before they even start spearing you. These guys are interesting too. You're gonna to want to wait for them to throw their comically oversized missile bombs. Uh, and then you could employ similar strats, of course. They also seem to be a hybrid mixture. They do uh, the jump kicks, which is kind of annoying. Similar to the, uh, the purple foot soldiers. Not too bad though. So these guys in this particular section, apparently they um, infinitely loop. Because I was, on my first playthrough, I kept killing them and they didn't stop. So that's another place if you want to farm for lives, if you're not doing a no-death run and you just want to do regular run, uh, feel free to do so there. Uh, I found it to be a little tricky to hit them, but again, if you do the uh, jumping AB attack that we keep doing, I believe it kills them in one hit. So, go right ahead. And we're going to want to stay towards uh, the top of the screen soon.
uh, amateur hour over here. Because this is actually the end of the stage. <laughs> So you're just going to be dealing with waves of foot soldiers, uh, and then eventually there will be um, the end of the stage. Here's a very, very quick segment. Uh, these gunner helicopter things. What you want to do is jump kick them and try to get underneath slash behind them and do the jumping AB attack. can be a little bit tricky though, um, but if you utilize that strategy, they're pretty easy to take care of. There's a few of them in this level. Kind of, the level starts and ends with them. I don't advise just doing the jump kicks and going back and forth, because that puts you in harm's way a little bit more uh, with the machine gun. And basically use very similar strats here for these guys as well. Uh, it doesn't really matter that the stage is quote-unquote moving and that you're on like the uh, rocket hoverboard. Pretend like you're walking around like a normal level, you know what I mean? Don't don't let the uh, the aesthetics get in the way of your, your normal strategy. Definitely doing a poor job against these guys. There we go. And same strats here. Sometimes they can fly pretty high though, which uh, could be annoying and your jumping AB attack can miss them. But uh, yeah, as I mentioned, this level's not too difficult. At all, really. Probably the... This is probably the easiest uh, segment or level in the game. No boss, as I mentioned. And now we're actually approaching the home stretch. Um, definitely the hardest levels are coming up, for sure. So scene five here is definitely a bit of a marathon, um, including the final boss, which has a very high HP pool. Uh, you're gonna use similar strats here, um, like you did in the sewers, but of course I'm messing everything up in this run. <laughs> and after this wave of foot soldiers, there's gonna be another hole in the ground spewing out more Mausers, which you're gonna wanna kinda stalk and do the jumping AB attack. Continuing on, uh, we're actually going to be utilizing that platform up ahead um, as a means of making things easy on ourselves. After this wave, of course. And the reason it will make things easy for us is there will be a bunch of foot soldiers that have to jump up from bo the bottom. Obviously, you also get to avoid the lasers down there. And when they jump up, you have a very easy avenue to kill them right away. Again, if I were you, I would not go to the bottom. Um, just kind of opens yourself up uh, to a world of pain. As you can see, clearly waiting for them to jump up makes things super duper easy. Need a little patience. The first two spear guys, I will jump back up here and take care of them. Didn't do a great job, but oh well. This next wave, you do not want to jump back up, because I found that if you jump back up, the spear guys kind of get into a weird pattern where they're still able to hit you with the spears despite you being on an elevated platform, which kind of sucks. So even though I'm getting my, uh, my shell kicked here, you definitely still don't want to go up. I just did a really bad job of dealing with them. Now these guys, I traditionally just stink at. So they fall down and eventually they get heads and shoot things at you. What you want to do is uh, jumping AB attack them as soon as you see their head pop out. But it's easier said than done. I find it to be pretty tricky, at least for myself. Um, if, you know, unfortunately, kind of mess up like I did, just try to maintain your sanity about you. 
The best thing to do is to get behind them because their uh, fire rate in range is really tricky. Uh, they're definitely up there with the most annoying enemies in the game for me. They might be the most annoying, actually. Again, if you're able to kind of jumping AB attack them as soon as they land, it'll be easy, but if you mess up at all, things get really hectic. But uh, we're actually close to... I guess it would be like a mini-boss. It's not a boss, though. Um, but it's it's got like a very dramatic... <laughs> Entrance and stuff like that. I don't have the manual in front of me, so I can't remember the name of these guys, but pretty much they fly around and shoot lasers at you. They take two jumping kicks, and your best strat is to just go through and jump kick and try to avoid the lasers. Um, at times, they can be a little bit tricky to hit as far as uh, their positioning, but as long as you focus on jump kicking and focus on just avoiding the lasers and timing it, you should be fine. I feel like on like my worst attempt, uh, maybe these guys hit me like twice or something. And now we got a little bit longer to go before we have the boss, which I believe is called Granitor, who up until this point has the highest HP in the game. Uh, so it's definitely a bit of a sloggy fight, but it's an easy one. If you know what you're doing, of course. <laughs> Nothing really new to report here. Dealing with, you know, same old foot soldiers. The next level though, which is an NES exclusive level, that's got a lot of stuff going on. And in my opinion, that's the toughest level in the game. Um, bar none. All right, so these laser guys, uh, if you kill them, you get points. What you wanna do is get uh, where I was to the right. Uh, you don't wanna go too far to the right because you can get shot. But if you dilly-dally too much to the left, you will get shot by both of them. Um, and again, you don't have to take them both out, but I choose to. And here we have Granitor. And there's a pizza there in case you need it. I wouldn't recommend getting it until your health is really low. Um, I sneak a few attacks in there, but you don't really need to do that. I just did it because he has a lot of HP. So you're pretty much just doing the same stuff, guys. You're doing the old jump kick attack. I find it's best to enunciate my post-attack jump. So you can see it's like I attack and then I kind of jump pretty far to the left or to the right before coming back. Um, this was not a very smooth Granitor fight, but good enough. You can still get a hit uh, out of the air, which is unfortunate unless you kind of get the perfect timing and the perfect uh, like jump heights. But for the most part, if you employ the strategy, you'll be fine. And like I said, if you get down to about two clicks of health, or if you start the fight around there, go ahead and grab the pizza. But this is all you gotta do, guys. Uh, the issue is, obviously, it takes a long time, he's got a lot of HP, so you gotta kinda keep on your skills, because if you let up, you might get slapped against the wall, then he might shoot you with his flamethrower, and then things start getting hectic. But this is all you gotta do, just keep going back and forth, doing this jump kick. Like I said, focus on, after they attack, immediately jumping and creating your distance and you'll be good there you go this was definitely a bit of a wetting of your palate as far as difficulty goes because again in my opinion this next level the dojo or whatever it is um by far the hardest level in the game lots of new enemies Obviously, you're going to get, you know, your standard affair of foot soldiers, but the new enemies can be real tricky if you're not dealing with them appropriately. And you don't get a pizza until the boss, so yeah. Definitely uh, had some real close calls on this level and the boss in a few of my no-death runs. Ultimately, we got through it, obviously, but here's the first. Uh, the best way to deal with these guys is two jumping AB attacks. Otherwise, if you hit them with normal attacks or jump kicks, it takes four attacks. And as you see, if they're able to get into the air, they throw, like, throwing knives at you. Um, which is super duper annoying, and you have to deal with a decent amount of them as well. So the best way to deal with them 
Uh, obviously, you try to get them towards the edge of the, uh, the screen. Jumping AB attacks, as it will only take two to knock them out. And uh, keep your wits about you. Um, if you feel like you have to do the jump kick, do so. And just be ready to kind of kick them before they start getting in the air. Once they start getting in the air, things just get kind of crazy. You have some foot soldiers bursting through the floor. You kind of saw me go to the top there. That's because, as usual, uh, the top is typically the safest spot. There's a weird section in this level also coming up, which you will see shortly. We have more foot soldiers popping out of the ground. Should be three, I think. I don't think I triggered the other one yet. Yep. Don't really have much to say anymore about the foot soldiers, guys, so... If you don't know what you're doing by now, you're gonna have a hard time, and honestly, I don't know how you got to this level. Uh, you can hit that, um, candle. But again, I don't really go out of my way to do any of that kind of stuff. I did it by accident there. <laughs> I wasn't actually trying to hit it. But yeah, this is an NES exclusive level, as I mentioned, and there's a crap ton of enemy variety, which is pretty cool. So there, I like to stay towards the top of the screen and kind of like get over as quickly as I can. Those uh, bamboo shoots can get kind of annoying, so just be on the lookout. And if you get hit, just keep cool. So now we're dealing with two Vincent Van Growls. I only hit them when they come off the screen, so I wait for them. And then as soon as I see their head, I start hitting them. Uh, occasionally throughout my runs, I found that I won't get a wonderful pattern like this. Meaning, uh, I might hit them when they jump in, um, and then I'll hit them twice, and then all of a sudden they just, I don't know, they don't follow in that pattern all the time, at least what I saw. So if they do that, I would say it's in your best interest just, uh, just to wait it out. So we're just chilling, waiting towards the top of the screen. Eventually, uh, he will come here. And yes, if you were to turn around and hit him, um, the RNG gets really weird. Sometimes he'll kind of jump on you. Uh, so it's best just to wait over to the side of the screen. That was my bad. I actually got a good uh, pattern there and I kind of screwed it up. But I don't advise... This is one of the only enemies in the game. I don't advise you to do any special attacks other than just a regular attack. There we go, hopefully we get him in the loop here. Seems like we do. A little tough to remember guys when you've done four consecutive no death runs in four attempts over the course of like two days. Uh, it's just hard to remember, you know? Alright, so these guys are a pain if you don't know what you're doing. Again, try to get them to the, to the edge of the screen, which is a strat for a lot of enemies in this game. They are very passive, so basically you could walk them down. Do not go in guns a-blazing, because that'll kind of trigger their attacks, and they could F you up quickly, to put it bluntly. But if you kind of walk them over to the side of the screen, oftentimes they can get bunched together, as you saw, and then you could just wail on them. And the same strat here for these guys, you want to employ the jumping AB attack and get them over to the side of the screen and kind of like stun lock them, but if you can't, you know, obviously employ your jump kicks. We are getting close to a pizza, so if you can get through these guys, even with one or two slivers of health, I feel like you'll be okay. Because uh, pretty much after this, all you have to do is deal with uh, some foot soldiers, which at this point again, you should have plenty of experience with. Easier said than done, of, uh, of course, you know, this is not an easy level. And it's been a long one too, so you might be a little exhausted at this point mentally. And, as you can see, it's the jump kicking kind, which, uh, kind of annoying. Would have been nice if they threw the, uh, you know, the really passive ones that just, like, punch you. But, there's gonna be one more wave of foot soldiers after this, I believe, and then we are at the boss, which has a pizza. Here you see the pizza. So I would say again, depending on your life going into the boss, 
uh, you might not want to grab the pizza right away, but I will say this, this boss is ugh, really annoying. If it wasn't for Krang's massive HP pool, I would say this guy is the toughest boss in the game. It's Shogun, the NES exclusive boss. So, you're going to want to jump kick his head and get away as quickly as possible as he'll swipe at you. Now, what makes this fight hard is this. His head comes off, and that also attacks you. You cannot attack his head when it's off his body. So essentially, you have two things trying to attack you right now. Your main goal, obviously you want to inflict damage on the Shogun, but your main goal here is you want to avoid the head. And then when the head goes back on the body, you're free to uh, assume a normal strategy, of course. My health was getting pretty low there, and when the head comes off, you can get kabonged real easily. So, I would say four to three slivers of health, you're better off grabbing the pizza instead of messing around. Thankfully, his health pool isn't ginormous. And if you get good head RNG, so to speak, uh, the fight isn't too bad. But, like, that's a perfect example what you guys just saw there. I got hit, like, three or four or five times. Like, it's... Oof, it's rough. You saw me sneak in a regular hit there. Uh, I found with this guy, if you do kind of get cornered and hit, you can sneak in a regular hit before getting away. Some bosses, you can't do that, but I found with him, you can. But don't consider that a consistent strategy. Just try to focus on avoiding the head and jump kicking as much as possible. Now, I have a short, actually, where I did a lot of practicing, and I... I no-hit him without his head coming off, but if you want to kind of see that mindset and strategy, you can check that out. Don't want to go too far into that. Um, oh, I remember this. So this was probably <laughs> the worst start to the Technodrome I ever had, even when I was just doing practice runs. These boomerang guys are just beating the poop out of me. And then it got me flustered, and I almost got shot there, and forgetting about these guys because I was so upset with myself. But, uh, same strat as the other level. You're gonna want to go up to the top of the screen and to the right as quickly as possible and just take them out. You have some more wall lasers. <clears throat> Technodrome is definitely not easy, but in my opinion, the dojo level before this is way harder. Um, a couple things to kind of... Be wary of those really annoying enemies that fall from the sky and have the heads that pop out are here. Um, not yet, obviously. And there is these weird, like, uh, things that pop out of the ground soon that can freeze you. Which, again, getting to the top of the screen is the best strat. And for them in particular, you're going to want to jump kick. I may or may not screw it up, though, in this run. <laughs> yeah, I screwed it up. Not good, guys. Not good. I kind of butchered that royally, actually. So I got caught in a really crappy pattern, but typically if you uh, go to the top and do the jump kick holding the kick on the way down, you'll just kill them. But obviously I was a little bit too far behind, so let that be a uh, word of caution to you. <clears throat> so for this level, there will be uh, a segment where you ride like a platform down, and at the end of that platform will be a pizza. So you do have a pizza coming up before the boss. Here you have my best friends, which I suck at. Again, jumping AB attack will kill them right away, but if you're a little off, it could uh, snowball real quickly. I think I kind of recover here a little bit. Yeah. I do a pretty good job of recovering here. That's good, at least. But uh, yeah, this is an enemy that I, I never got good at, man. I've seen people that make it look super easy, but not me. After them, you gotta deal with some more gunners. Again, they give you a point if you kill them. You don't have to kill them, but I choose to do so just because, you know, I like eliminating what's on the screen. The only thing that I never really eliminate are the, um, the, uh, motorcyclists. Alright, more machine gun guys. Um, the machine gun guys are gonna appear again as well towards the pizza. Again, if you aren't feeling comfortable with your spacing and whatnot, uh, always make sure to utilize your jump kick, get behind the enemy, so on and so forth.
All right, so right after these katana guys, there's gonna be another uh, wall laser, and there's gonna be more of those um, freezing things that pop out of the ground. So again, you're gonna wanna stay towards the top of the screen immediately after you kill these guys, and you're gonna wanna start jump kicking. And I think, and I hope, that I did it a little bit better this time around, but we'll see. There you go, we hit number 700. There you go. That's exactly how you do it, look at that. And now we're about to be on the platform, which is just a on-rail segment with the uh, balls similar to the first stage trying to hurt you. You're gonna wanna start in the middle of the platform. After the first ball, jump to the top. And then you're gonna wanna wait, I don't know why I did that. Just stay at the top and wait for this particular ball right there that comes down the middle. And go all the way down to the bottom and you will not have to avoid anything. There's the pizza. Don't grab it yet, unless you need it. You're gonna have to deal with a wave of machine gunners, which can be annoying. Uh, one of my runs almost ended here because um, I chose to not grab the pizza and I started getting bamboozled. Uh, I believe I was one hit away from dying before I got the pizza. <laughs> like, I couldn't even... They were literally blocking the pizza from me. It was so frustrating. So yeah, if you're not feeling comfortable, just go grab the pizza. But after the wave of gunners, uh, that's your last chance to get the pizza. So you're going to want to get it. They got these clowns again, which you want to get to the side of the screen. There's actually going to be another wave of them. After this wave, there's foot soldiers and then another wave of them. And you're basically at the boss. That's some good, uh, good stuff right there, getting both of them to the right of the screen pretty quickly. More uh, throwing knife foot soldiers. So again, if you are not feeling confident in your spacing and the patterns, just jump kick behind them. As mentioned, we have another wave here. And the boss of this uh, level is, I believe his name is General Trag. He's basically Granitor, but red. Um, in my opinion, he's easier, but there's a couple things to watch out for. <laughs> Which, again, in one of my no-death runs, um, I wasn't paying attention, and I got hurt pretty hard because of that. But we'll get to that soon. Gotta deal with more foot soldiers first. Alright, so you want to start at the bottom of the screen here, because if you stand near that door and that door hits you, it actually does a considerable amount of damage. Also, if General Trag hits you into that laser, it does more damage. Uh, the laser where the door was. So, it's basically uh, the same exact strat as you did on Granitor. Um, you jump kick the head, and you kind of jump away as far as possible, and you just rinse and repeat. Now, occasionally, you might get hit out of the air, you might get shot, whatever the case may be, you know. Don't freak out, just try to get yourself back into this similar of a pattern. Uh, it's really not that difficult. Uh, I'm not positive, but I feel like he has a little less HP than Granitor. It goes a little bit quicker. Um, I think the game probably was like, oh, well, the door might hit them, or the lasers might hit them, whatever the case may be, so we'll lower it a little bit. Uh, but yeah, definitely goes a little bit quicker than Granitor. But same strat, it's basically just... Uh, What's well, like the New Year New Me meme with a sting in WCW where he takes off his mask and it's his face paint or whatever. <laughs> it looks looks exactly the same. Um, but yeah, congrats on beating the boss here. And now you are on the final boss rush, which is Krang and Shredder, which um, I made some shorts of some good strats. I'm only going to go over Krang strat once and I'm just going to shut up because this fight's so long. I don't want to keep yapping. So you want to start where I was on the left side of the screen. You want to wait for him to shoot lasers with his eyes, jump kick, and then immediately do the jumping AB attack. You have to turn around and face him. After you do that attack, you want to jump to the top right of the screen, jump over to the left, and then back to where you started. And you literally do that over and over and over. The only variations that you have to watch out for are if Krang starts throwing his arms up in the air, he is very inconsistent. I do not recommend attacking him when he does that. I also don't really recommend 
jumping over him when he does that. I would wait it out until he gets in, more, in a more normal pattern, so to speak. Also with this particular strategy, when you jump from the top right to the top left, there will be a good chance that Krang will shoot his rocket arm at you, so you have to be quick to jump back towards the middle. I also don't think it's a good idea for you to attack him after he does the rocket arm because I find that his RNG is uh, a bit interesting to say the least. So realistically you're going from middle, attacking, top right, top left, back towards the middle. And you're just doing this over and over and over. The key to getting an easy attack in is you want to wait for him to shoot his eye laser. If he starts doing other shenanigans, just wait it out. I was able to get a no damage run of him. Um, I, yeah, I'm not here, obviously. It was segmented. But I actually have a pretty good run at Krang and Shredder here. It was definitely my best quote-unquote real run that wasn't segmented. I think when I was doing my segmented runs for the no no damage, no hit uh, on Krang, it took me about six six tries. It's pretty hard to get through Krang without getting hit once, just because the uh, his RNG is so weird. It's really easy just to get hit by something. But uh, the strategy that I'm giving here, in my opinion, is the easiest strategy. If you do, like, jump kicks, you're going to get hit a lot. Uh, I've also attempted a strategy that seems like it's viable, but way harder, where you attack him with regular attacks. Basically, you stay on his body and you go up and down the screen, like, vertically. You don't go left to right at all. If you get the spacing perfect, you could attack him like two, three, four times and then you literally jump over him and then you go towards the top of the screen and you just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I've seen somebody do it as well, but when I practice it, I don't know, it didn't really work well for me. I find that this is the easiest way to get the most damage on the board and it's also the safest. And it is essentially a pattern, so as long as you kind of get the hang of it, um, you know, just comes down to execution. A little less RNG involved with this strat. And when he's blinking, he's like real close to dying with this strat, so you know you're basically in the clear. All right, and we're gonna immediately roll into Shredder. So you see where I'm positioning myself, which is basically just below that line on the right side of the screen. You're going to want to stay on this horizontal path the entire time, going from left to right. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to eventually bait out Shredder to do the demutation ray, and then you will jump kick attack the one that goes to the right or the left of the screen. So let's see here. Just going back and forth on the horizontal plane, as I mentioned. Eventually one of the Shredders will fall back. You will not get hit by the ray if you stayed on the path that I told you to. And then you basically avoid the swipe and jump kick until Shredder's helmet falls off. And you will do the same after the helmet falls off and he'll be dead. Occasionally you'll run into a instance where you might be doing this and Shredder's helmet falls off after a few hits. That means that is the, the fake Shredder, uh, the mirror Shredder if you want to call him that. And you'll pretty much just have to go back and forth and do the same strat until you get this Shredder, which is clearly the real one because he's taking a million hits. And that's that. You pretty much never veer off this left to right pattern. However, I will say this, guys. Occasionally, when you're kicking the real Shredder here, and the helmet falls off, sometimes the Demutation Ray Shredder will be very aggressive and come at you, to which then you kind of have to move around the arena and utilize a jump kick strat after beating some attacks. But more often than not, the Demutation Ray Shredder will just chill like he's doing here. And it's seven jump kicks, I believe. So if you're on like jump kick five or six and he's coming at you, don't poop your pants. Just stay true. And uh, there you go, you beat the game. So there you have it, guys. That is a uh, no death run of Team NT2, the arcade game on the NES. If you guys want to see more uh, content, check out the pinned comment, description below, or overlay at the end of the video here. You can check out uh, my shorts, my uh, segmented all bosses no hit, or my um, eventually my unboxings, as well as 
my all four turtles no hit runs. And hopefully you found something cool and enjoyable. A review coming as well, clearly. If you did, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, check out the other turtles videos and I'll see you guys on a future video. Take care.